Good morning. Um, I just wanted to tell you a bit about our journey um, of Top Employer and how that's been a bumpy road, to be fair. It's not been a smooth and easy one, but put it into context and then focus on how we've taken or we're attempting to take talent to the next level um, over the next couple of years in, in terms of our strategy. So Cayenne in the UK is a relatively young organisation. 50 years we celebrated last year. And we've grown at an amazing growth. So from 10 years ago, we had 500 employees um, to now just under 13,000. And what that's meant is that our infrastructure hasn't grown nearly as quickly as we would like, like it to have. If we've got a crisis, if you've got a fire, we can definitely sort that out for you, not a problem. But when we start to stop and look in terms of long term, that's been quite a challenge, both for us as an organisation, our senior leaders, our colleagues, um, because we can fix things. We've got a great reputation in the business that we do, in what we operate in. Um, almost a level of arrogance at some points as to, but anybody who works in that industry would want to come and work for KM. Um, so we've got over a 40 million square foot of warehouse, um, and some of them, it certainly feels like it when you go to visit. Um, and we've got, like I say, 13,000 colleagues who are all great at what they do, um, but that's what they do. And they're very focused on serving the customer. Um, so it's, a, it's, a it's been a challenging environment through KM. Just to give you an example of how diverse we are, this is just a literally one section of the country, um, of the number of sites, of the number of different businesses. So we will move anything that you want us to. We will move it by sea, by plane, by truck, by courier, any way you want. Um, so we have a variety of different elements in our business. Contract Logistics looks after um, exactly what you would imagine. We've got the Waitrose contract. Um, so they're all our trucks, despite being branded with Waitrose. We deliver beer to pubs and clubs and to supermarkets. Um, we have a government and defence contract that we look after. And then we've got our freight forwarding business, air, sea, overland. So we can, we can get pretty much anything anywhere. Um, our areas of growth this year have been around the government and defence contract and also around the pharmaceutical industry as well. So very different from what we've been used to. And with that level of growth, you can imagine a lot of that has come from um, 2P transfers into the organisation, whether it's been public sector, private. Um, so our culture and our diversity is a right melting pot in there. People who've worked um, for the MOD, I think our longest serving employee in the MOD, something like 65 years. Um, and then to, to transfer over into KN was obviously quite a challenge, as you can imagine. So we've had a a number of challenges as we've moved forward. Um, and that's been encapsulated, I think, in our top employer journey. So we were given the notification 2017 um, that as from a European perspective, all the countries would go for top employer accreditation. And in that first year, we weren't successful. We had a number of things that were, were happening at that time. So we had the launch of a new KN strategy. Um, we had changes in our national management team, our board of directors. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time. And we probably didn't take it very seriously at that point as well. And my, my line manager, um, our HR director, is a fabulous, fabulous person, really considerate. And very supportive, everything you would want from a HR director and from your line manager. He's also the most incredibly competitive person I have ever met, and it goes yin and yang. And one of my low career moments was when um, Claire came to speak to us to talk through our European um, reps, trade union reps, um, about Top Employer. And my boss asked the question, how many people weren't successful last year and in the UK? And it was a tumbleweed moment of when we got notified too. Um, so it, wasn't, it really wasn't the best. 
But we took the feedback from top employer and that was the key bit for us and the key bit as part of our journey. So we had a new strategy coming on board. We took the feedback um, that we had from our report and we were very focused. Right, it, we can't fix everything in one go. It's never going to happen that way. So we needed to start to chunk things down, as they say. Um, and we were very clear on what our goals would be. So we wanted to be the best company to work with. So we wanted our customers not to ever consider going anywhere else. Particularly from a freight forwards in perspective, you'll only ever get so something like 80% of customers don't return because generally they've just had one cargo and, and that's been it. Um, but there was also a bit more in that stats, in that data. Um, what were we doing? What weren't we doing? So we launched a, a, um, a programme called Care, which was very customer focused and put the customer at the centre of everything we did but it also had a great engagement tool that sat with it. And suddenly our branches, particularly from a freight forward perspective, were engaged with each other. People were talking to each other. People were having conversations at the water coolers, at the coffee machine. They were organizing picnic lunches, variety of different things. Um, and that started to, to firstly to demonstrate or increase in, the, in terms of our engagement. But we started then very slowly to see customers returning. So it's cool, that's moving, that's where we want it to be. We also wanted to be the best company to work for and top employer accreditation was really important for us along that journey. And like I said, we're very new in that journey and we're, as an organisation, we're very immature, but we're getting there um, and that's always the key thing. We wanted to live our behaviours and we've just been talking about behaviours um, for the first hour. Because we've had an organisation that will always deliver from a customer's perspective, it might not have always been done it the right way. Um, so there could be lots, of, lots and lots of examples that we could supply that would, as HR professionals, makes us cringe pretty much um, that these things still happen within organisations. We also wanted to double the size of our business by 2022. Um, obviously, that's a further long-term strategy. Um, so we were really clear. We then took that from a HR perspective and said, right, what's our big six? What do we need to do? What do we need to deliver on? Um, and more importantly, what are the two areas of this that are going to be our game changers? Not only as a function, but as a HR, uh, sorry, not only as a HR function, but also as an organisation. And the two that we came up with were very much around next level talent management and defining our own employee brand, what's our attraction? Whilst we're an organisation that's floated um, on the Swiss stock market, we are still very family owned by Mr Cuny. Um, so he still sits at the top of the tree as such, which brings its own challenges. And part of that is we don't like advertising, we don't like social media, so these things all become quite challenging. So we, 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 we made the brave decision that something had to change in that area. Um, we took those two two key points and we took them to our board of directors as a HR team and said we actually need your help on this. The moving talent is not a HR job, it's all of us to do, um, which is, as I'm sure you've all experienced is often the common thing um, when it comes to performance reviews, IDPs, talent management, succession planning, um, somebody will always knock on your door and say I've come to see HR, what training course do I need to go on? Um, and we had lots of that still happening in our organisation. So our talent programme was sponsored by our integrated logistics director, um, Chris Gavin, um, who has taken it very seriously and, and even opens his team meetings discussing talent, which is a, a great step forward. Also, as an organisation that is, an, like I said, is not very mature, we don't have all the processes, all the policies in place. Um, whilst people have joined our organisation from different organisations and have brought different tools with them, it wasn't embedded. And we took the view that we could spend the next 10 years almost trying to embed those processes in place, or we needed to stick our foot on the accelerator, we needed to shift gear, otherwise within the next couple of years we were going to find it exceptionally, exceptionally tough. From a talent perspective then, we, we, we took it down even further and we said, right, what are our key areas in talent? 
So we decided we needed to look at our graduate programme, we needed to look at apprenticeships, our future talent pipeline, performance management and accessible learning. They were the five things that we thought as a HR team would help shift that gear from a talent perspective. We've had graduate schemes as long as we've been in the UK, two or three. We kind of played about a bit with it. We didn't really have a structured programme. We would expect our graduates to come out and go into a shift manager type role in a warehouse. From a HR perspective, we would be looking at HR advisor roles um, type level. We thought, actually, we need, we need to shift it. We really do need to move it up considerably. Um, so by doing that, we, we've changed from our almost a dozen graduates that we have through each year. And we've got 24 graduates through our programme at the minute, with 22 set to join us in September. We reshaped our graduate programmes to make sure that they became more stretching for people as they joined. And that when, as they came out of their programme, we should be looking at um, almost a warehouse manager or a HR business partner. They were the end roles that we were expecting, or are expecting, I should say, people to take within the next couple of years after once their programme's completed. We also had um, paid into sponsorship of the Novus Trust. Novus Trust um, sponsor particularly logistics degrees. Um, so we're up in competition with organisations such as DHL, which everybody sees from the Grand Prix advertising, etc. Um, so if, you, if you've got a choice, the opportunity of going to Monaco or sitting in a warehouse in Milton Keynes, it's quite a, it's quite a difficult one. Um, and again, we, we paid into that. And, and we went along every now and then and, and said, we're great. We ticked a box. We, we, we've part funding Nova's Trust. We didn't really do a lot with it. Um, so again, we took the opportunity there. We got a lot of our senior leaders um, to take the opportunity to go to Huddersfield University um, and be guest speakers um, around specific topic, topics that they were looking for from the course. Um, and we looked at dramatically increasing on our internships as well, which would obviously then start to feed into our graduate programme and hope that people, when they had that choice um, 12 months down the line, would think that Monaco really wasn't that, that sexy or that exciting and a warehouse in, in Milton Keynes would be just about fine. Um, so we put a lot of effort in with Novus Trust to make sure that we, we became part of what they do as well. We also put a huge amount of focus into our apprenticeships. Um, one of the great things I think as a HR professional uh, that the apprenticeship levy did do was get business leaders focused on using that money that was sat within their levy pot. Um, and all of a sudden, we have a levy pot that we can use and we can spend. Um, and if we don't spend it, we lose it. It was that simple. That gave a great level of focus. And, and once again, we had done some apprenticeships throughout our organisation, but not, not a massive amount. So we've currently got 222 apprenticeships going through our scheme. Through our apprenticeship levy, um, we fund things from MBAs, um, and we've really tried to make it accessible. So one of the programmes that we've developed is Warehouse to Wheels, as we call it. There is a, a, a true shortage of drivers, um, of HGV drivers within the UK. Um, it's quite costly to go and do your licence, but when you've done your licence, um, you almost have a pick of jobs and of hours. Um, and it's not uncommon for people to move around for an extra couple of pounds an hour. It's, it's a common problem, happens all the time. Um, so by doing a warehouse to wheels, we were able to, able to assess our colleagues from a warehouse basis and put them through that training. That could be levy funded as well. So from our operation colleagues' perspective, this was great news because all of a sudden HR were adding value to what they needed them to do. Um, is, it was how that their view, um, but it has been a great successful program. One of the other things that um, going through apprenticeship programs, which I'm sure you're all aware of, is you actually generally get quite a lot of more loyalty, and you'll get a lot more people who will stay within your organisation um, once they've gone through an apprenticeship route. So they've been 
really key to us in delivering from our MBAs right through to our warehouse to wheels type programs. We also, very similar to what we were talking about earlier around behaviours, we've also really embedded our performance review cycle within our businesses. And part of that has always been around behaviours, but we started calling it out. We've started discussing it. And when we started our top employer journey, we said, is everybody um, go through a performance review? And we had to be honest and we were like, well, no, probably about a third of our population do. Um, and excuse the terminology because I really don't like it very much. But our, what would cl be classed as our white collar population, um, but our blue collar population wasn't. Therefore, we're missing out on a huge talent pool coming through. So each of our business units and each of our contracts looked at, OK, how can we do this? It doesn't need to be the full, pro the full process, the same forms, all of that all of that stuff, but it needs to talk about what training do you need to have? Where are you missing? What are your aspirations? And we discovered some amazing skills that we already had in our organisation just by having those conversations um, and also picking up on individuals' aspirations and that desire not to be in a warehouse, but actually to get out on the road and be a driver or be a driver's mate and you start to develop and start to move um, things along. But we're also key to understand why our line managers preferred, it's probably a better way to put it, preferred to be stuck in that fight mode, in that I've got a fire, how can I put it out? It's an emergency, I'm brilliant, I've worked 13 hours today, um, just to make sure Waitrose have got their Christmas turkeys. Um, that, was our, that was our challenge. And when we dug through a bit deeper, we got, to, we got almost to the number of the problem. They didn't really know what to do. So they didn't know where to find the policies. They didn't know what they should do when somebody was off absent or off sick. So we had a huge education piece to do. So one of our HR colleagues designed a programme called Licence to Manage. Um, we quite liked the the 007 theme that went with it. Um, and Licence to Manage became a toolkit for all our line managers to be able to go and find the information that they needed. It was accessible at their fingertips. But we could also use that and run that through the apprenticeship levy, which was always a good, a good point, um, particularly at that senior selling bit. Um, and we've put through hundreds of managers through our Licence to Manage, or who have access now, We've got 80 yards waiting to go on the next course in September. And we also have developed further from there um, license to lead. So we, so we know there's a distinction between managing and leading. Um, and license to lead is a real focus on our behaviours and now how we embed that. So we've started to see um, a real shift from our talent perspective. For us, it's not around our process and our policies. They are key and they are important and they will continue, continue to be developed and continue to evolve. But for us, we were really conscious that by not putting our foot on the accelerator, we were about to lose out on a good couple of years worth of talent that was due to come through um, from a UK perspective. So it's been really, really enjoyable and bumpy um, a journey along the way. When we then did our 2018 um, top employer submission, um, to say that we were um, nervous is an uh, understatement. Um, and the way I'm saying this is if I've I did it all, it, I've, I have to be honest. Um, the hard work was down to my colleague who, who sat up there, um, Sadarsh, and who rallied everybody around to be able to see, OK, how far have we come? What have we done? What's been different this year from last year? And we were really pleased, to say the, to say the least. We were exceptionally proud as well. Um, and we still talk about it now. I think come December, we put our feet up and said, that's it, we're not doing anything for the rest of the year. It was a good job we only had a week left, really. Um, but we were exceptionally proud, and we were exceptionally proud on our talent piece, because this is where, A, we'd put a huge amount of focus as a HR organisation, 
Um, and also, it was working. It was the foundations, but it started to work. And we could see then, um, and we just wanted to demonstrate, these were our biggest improvement areas. So it demonstrated with our focus by being very clear on what we wanted to achieve. By being quite selective, we could have chosen 101 things um, as our key strategy elements from a HR function perspective. But actually, we're now starting to lay some great foundations that are starting to move us in the right way. Um, and from a KN UK perspective, that's brilliant. Um, if not, we're always going to lose out to that opportunity to go to Monaco and um, get the opportunity to see if you can meet Lewis Hamilton along the way. Um, and I don't mean to pick on Milton Keynes. It's lovely warehouses in Milton Keynes. Um, but there's just a lot of them, unfortunately. And that was also one of our issues, um, that, that war to try and get the right people at the right times. Thank you. Joe, we've got some um, great questions here. I mean, it's, it's really interesting seeing the questions come in and those that sort of catch fire uh, and take off. There's one um, straight away that's, that's shot, came in quite late, but shot straight to the top of the, uh, <laughs> the charts from uh, Anne and Dieter. Um, and she asks, what ideas helped you attract more talent? You did mention earlier, she says, it was just two graduates and now it's approximately 25, I think. Yeah. You said. But what, so what caused the sudden spike? What was the difference? Um, I think one of the differences was our involvement with the Novus Trust. So we were, it, we were already taking that kind of um, underlying step. We became a lot more active from a social media perspective. And we did have a little bit of a mantra. Our head office sits in Hamburg. And we did have a little bit of a mantra, ask for forgiveness, not permission. Um, so we did get a little bit of um, spiky comments every now and then. Um, so we were very active within, within those areas. Right, right. Uh, another great question, um, which kind of reflects the practicalities of many people's budgets, if you like, is how do you attract early talent if you don't spend a lot on advertising? Um, so it, it really is through that trying to get um, people, at, particularly from a graduate perspective, like that Novus Trust, through the apprenticeships, we've used quite a lot from families. Yeah. So our referrer, friend and family member has been a really key policy as well. So that's been great and proven successful. Fantastic. And, and have you um, noticed any immediate change in retention levels um, from what you've done, or is that still a benefit yet to, to come? We've noticed some in our graduate retention. Um, so we had, whereas we would have 10 or 12 graduates, by the end of the programme, we generally have two or three left, um, to, to be perfectly honest, and we've noticed a change in that as we've changed our programmes, made them a lot, um, a lot more stretching and a lot more interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I, well, I can't slightly more general question, but nevertheless, um, I, and difficult to answer quickly, I suppose, but it's, I mean, what were the biggest challenges in defining your employer brand? It's, it's an easy thing to say, let's define our employer brand, but much harder to do. One of the biggest challenges is everyone's got an opinion. Yeah. Um, and if it, didn't, if it didn't match the MDs, it might not be the right opinion. Yeah. Um, so I think that's been our biggest challenge is to, um, and as, as Suzanne was saying earlier around focus groups, we did a lot of them within our organisation. So we were able to point back to our data to say, but this is what our colleagues are saying. This is what was important to them. Right. Well, one, I'll just squeeze in a, just a, a couple more because um, I think this is worth doing. So were the internships that you mentioned, were they paid or, yeah. or unpaid? Yeah, they all paid. paid. Yeah, right. all paid. Okay, yeah. so that's, that, that's good. And, and a, a great question, which I know is exercising sort of many people's minds, is what tips do you have for people starting to look to use their apprenticeship? levy are there sort of particular things you would say watch out for this watch out for that um i think one of the things for us is that for the first or if for about a 12 month period we got somebody who was a real expert in that field i think we'd we'd played around with it by that point um so we we got a, a real expert in who really helped us understand it a lot more um as to what we could do and what we couldn't do um and and for me i think that would be my my key suggestion to anyone if you can is to get an, an expert in that area just for a short period of time. Okay. Uh, uh, as before, we haven't quite got through the, the questions, but I'm sure you'll be happy to answer them. Yep. In, in the, yep. Uh, in the, as long as it's not too I'm difficult. I'm not quite the last thing between you and coffee. I think Phil is. So um, 
Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>